Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and today we're going to be talking about some intense rainfall that has lashed Sydney and New South Wales overnight before taking a look at a developing tropical cyclone adjacent to the West Australian coastline which now has a shot of becoming a severe tropical cyclone. We're going to start things off down in southern Australia first off and looking at this uh, sort of um, reminiscent of an east coast low weather system that's moving through New South Wales this time. The low pressure area is onshore, it's located around Captain's Flat right now about 40 kilometres outside of Canberra. It moved through Sydney last night. It dumped some incredible rainfall totals over the eastern suburb, the western suburbs of Sydney. In fact, places have picked up over 250 millimetres and some places are probably going to get up towards that 300 millimetre total as the day goes on and some uh, more showers move through, but certainly some dry weather throughout the course of today, only expecting maybe a further 5 or 10 millimetres on top of the rainfall that has already fallen for the Sydney area. However, it will continue to be very wet down towards Canberra and at the uh, southern parts of New South Wales, closer to the Victoria border, but just some ridiculous rainfall totals are uh, currently falling through there. Uh, very high rainfall accumulations where we're looking at up towards 60 millimetres or 70 millimetres an hour, and again, these will hold themselves for around uh, maybe two or three hours at this time, so we're probably looking at for a further 200 millimetres um, in areas adjacent to the Kosciuszko Mountain uh, area. Um, and also adjacent to the remainder of the Blue Mountains around here, uh, near Threadbow and uh, Cooma and so forth. But yeah, just some all-out very, very heavy rainfall last night. Intense rainfall, actually, that moved through the Sydney area. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure that all of you guys would have been kept awake last night with just the hammering sound of rainfall. It really was at its worst early this morning at around 4 or 5 a.m., uh, but it certainly is um, still very, very bad nonetheless, and certainly some flooding is starting to unfold across Sydney at this time. Uh, so yeah, please, if you do live in Sydney or around Sydney, especially closer to Penrith and so forth, closer to the uh, western suburbs, please do leave me a weather report in your comment in the comment section down below uh, for your location. I'm really keen on hearing what's actually unfolded overnight um, in this part of Sydney because it has been very, very wet. Certainly the uh, highest amount of rainfall that New South Wales has received in quite a long time, uh, at least a couple of months. So yeah, certainly uh, very significant rainfall totals. And you can see just how widespread these rainfall totals are going to be. They should extend into Victoria as well. We're likely going to be seeing just a little bit of rainfall over the next day or so in Victoria, maybe up towards 50 or 80 millimetres in one or two locations closer to Omeo. Uh, we'll also likely see some further rainfall totals along at the New South Wales coastline, maybe another 100 millimetres today and maybe another 100 millimetres again uh, around Warragumba Dam, but certainly starting to ease off, that's for sure. And I believe the majority of the rainfall on the forecast that's north of Batemans Bay has already fallen for today. So yeah, hopefully things do start to ease off because they've had a very, very wet run of weather over the past 24 hours. And I was watching it materialize on radar imagery yesterday and I was thinking, wow, this is going to be a weather system, that's for sure. And it certainly hasn't disappointed. I did actually get a little bit of flaming for calling it a bit of a rain bomb. Well, yeah, the rain bomb is the Bureau of Meteorology's term. However, this certainly is a rain bomb. It was a bunch of rainfall that fell in a very short amount of time that's caused a significant amount of flash flooding. So yeah, you could definitely classify it as a rain bomb. Uh, this certainly has been a lot of water coming ashore, that's for sure, uh, from this low pressure area that's moved through. Thankfully, though, it certainly looks like it's on its way out. There's going to be some very heavy rainfall from thunderstorms that remain offshore, and if these storms do get themselves onshore, they'll likely drive rainfall accumulations up even more, um, specifically in these thunderclouds here. It looks like Sydney's actually experiencing some fine and sunny weather right now. It'll probably be still windy throughout the course of today, but still fine and sunny weather there. I'm sure they'll take it after last night and yesterday. But you can see if these storms do get themselves ashore, which they're looking like they're going to down towards Malakuta uh, in Victoria, then we're likely going to be seeing it some very high rainfall accumulations down there because these are some strong thunderclouds um, as indicated by the cloud top temperatures of around minus 60 degrees Celsius. Now, typically anything cooler than minus 50 indicates some pretty strong thunderstorms for New South Wales. So these storms here certainly are on the high level of strong, that's for sure. Um, and hopefully they do keep themselves offshore. Yeah, they do actually, and they sort of move down into the waters of Tasman Sea. Looks like Tasmania might cop a little bit of rainfall as well on the extreme eastern coast, but yeah, it do doesn't look like this front is going to be any more of a significant threat to the Australian mainland by the looks of things. Just a couple more hours of some very heavy rainfall for New South Wales and parts of Victoria, but it doesn't look like Tasmania is going to get any impact whatsoever. And yeah, you can see a secondary front moving through probably on around Monday afternoon by the looks of things. This one 
is actually going to be quite strong and it will be bringing some snowfall or at least some wet snow towards uh, the Blue Mountains around Threadbow and Gingerbun and so forth. We'll be seeing probably up towards 10 centimetres of snow falling there and that again is reciprocated amongst the snow forecast over the next five days. 10 or so centimetres on the forecast up there. Nothing yet for Tasmania. The mountains just aren't high enough yet to stop any significant amount of snow but I would not be surprised if from that front there is a light dusting uh, probably around Monday evening or early, very early Tuesday morning. There might be a very light dusting on some of the highest of the Tasmania mountains around uh, Mount Cradle Mountain and so forth in that sort of area. So snow lovers, you do have a slight chance of some snow in Tasmania, but a much better chance of snow in parts of Victoria and New South Wales. Again, it's not going to be any anything crazy. We're definitely not in snow season just yet, but 10 centimetres of snow will be a nice start to snow season, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, temperatures certainly going to be plummeting Monday night into Tuesday morning um, across parts of Victoria and New South Wales, down towards three degrees, in fact, down towards zero degrees uh, for Tasmania. Uh, but it's going to be Wednesday night, I believe, that's going to be the really chilly one by the looks of things. Wednesday morning, yeah, it's going to get down quite cool, that's for sure, around Threadbow and that sort of area. Uh, minus one, but typically it's about four or five degrees cooler, I find, than what the Eastern Rebirth says in the highest of mountains. So we'll be seeing a f minus five degree night there so certainly going to be very cool indeed and very cool across New South Wales and Victoria the weather certainly is moving into that winter period that is for sure now I did say severe tropical cyclone at the start of the video and this is something that we do need to be looking at quite closely it's going to be front and center of my attention over the next couple of days take a look at this tropical low up here tropical low 12 U and we've only had 12 tropical lows this cyclone season and it's April so certainly been a disappointing season for activity I have to say but this one here doesn't look like it's wanting to disappoint. This tropical load is forming out in quite a large size, but I've looked at the Bureau of Meteorology track map and they've actually released a lot of information on this system, which I'm surprised at, pleasantly surprised, of course. Um, and they're calling for the system to remain very small in its lifespan. And as we know, as I hammer home a lot of the time with these tropical cyclones, is small systems can create monsters. They can be very susceptible to the environment, but in the case of this system, where it's got about 24 hours of very good conditions, it will likely be able to rapidly and it's fine. It looks like it's certainly starting to try that at this time. It looks like it has a good chance of becoming a pretty strong system by the looks of things. The wind forecast is still not really there from the Eastern Relief model and also the Axis G3 model. It's going to have until about Sunday evening to attain its peak intensity. It probably will attain peak intensity just before lunchtime on Sunday uh, for Western Australia. Um, the model's calling for this to probably peak out with wind gusts of around 140 kilometers an hour. Yep, that's a very good guess from me. Um, and the Axis G3 probably calling for something slightly stronger as always. No, not really. Um, but the Eastern Blair from the Axis G3 are pretty happy with what looks to be a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone. And again, if it does just intensify about 15 or 20% faster than what the models are expecting, it will likely become a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone. Now, I'm throwing around the term of Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone. It isn't a threat to land per se. It's going to be very small and the reason uh, why it's no threat to land is because of its size. It's going to be too small to really throw significant impacts ashore and by Sunday evening it's already starting to die off so it's only got about 24 hours left to really rapidly intensify and because of its size it's really not going to be able to pump any uh, rainy conditions ashore across Western Australia and certainly nothing of significant wind speed. So there is no need to panic for areas uh, for residents around Broome or Derby or uh, in the Kimberley region around Columbaroo or Truscott, uh, or even down towards Port Hedland and Caratha, there's no need to panic or fret about this tropical cyclone because it isn't a threat to the Australian coastline and it will be remaining offshore for the remainder of its lifespan. And again, it just won't have enough size or time to pump any significant impacts ashore. So maybe one or two showers around Broome over the next 48 hours, but nothing significant. I can promise you that at this time. Now, there's also been those threats developing up in the Coral Sea um, and also in the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria. Again, the models just don't know what they want with this system. It's very difficult to really forecast because they push it back every single day. So I don't really know what to say at this point, but it does look like we're seeing some more certainty surrounding next weekend where we might be heading into a wetter phase uh, because of the tropical load bringing in a lot of moisture, that's for sure, from the Coral Sea, which will be colliding with far northern Queensland for locations north of Lucinda. It looks like they could be receiving some significant 
percent rainfall next weekend again nothing crazy but still maybe 200 millimeters here and there maybe 100 millimeters like hands and then up towards cooktown that rainfall accumulation doubles but yeah i mean just looking at this forecast it looks like the wet season is well and truly over the rainfall is pulled out of western australia and it's starting to pull out of the northern territory now queensland especially far north queensland typically gets about a month more rainfall um from uh, when the northern territory wet season starts to die down but it does look like things are really starting to die down for the wet season at this point i'm not even going to bother to give a detailed forecast on far north queensland uh, for this rainfall eight or nine days out in advance if it keeps playing we'll keep checking in on it of course every single day and if it keeps uh holding itself on the forecast models and it's certainly something that i'm going to start giving a lot more attention over the next uh, couple of days but there's no point in me trying to predict whether eight days in advance for the models to just push it back and push it back and then completely screw it up or flip-flop and change forecast on forecast. So um, I'm not going to try and do that. We're going to just watch it and wait and see what happens. I do still think that the monsoon will have one last temporary burst up in the Arafura Sea that might bring some rainfall ashore to far northern Queensland. But it's nothing. It's going to be nothing crazy, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, nothing happening in the Coral Sea in regards to tropical cyclone systems around 10 days out from now. Even the Access G3 not really keen on anything. They are actually very keen on the uh, Arafura Sea tropical low but again because it's 10 days out and it's being pushed back religiously by the forecast models i really don't know what to say or call in regards to that system so forgive me for not being able to give a good forecast for far north queensland and the northern territory today but i promise you in around four or five days time we'll have a very good answer on what's going on here and anyway we're not looking at a thousand millimeters of rainfall we're having as much warning is very beneficial and we're probably only going to see about 200 millimeters of rainfall so still could cause some flash flooding or some riverine flooding Flooding, but it's not going to be well ending whatever rainfall we do receive up in far northern Queensland. So we'll just watch it and we'll wait and see. Now nationwide around the rest of Australia, it looks like Perth might finally receive some rainfall. The forecast models are all pretty happy with around maybe 10 millimetres falling in around 8 to 10 days time. Again, it's a long way out, so I can't really say for certain, but I am really hoping for some good rainfall. That is for sure for Perth area. Um, and yeah, the remainder of Australia looking high and dry by the looks of things except for that remainder of the rainfall falling for New South Wales and Queensland today. But yeah, apart from that, that is all that I have time for. A special shout out to the channel sponsors on screen right now. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.